Thank you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm uh, Sigbjörn Tilleli Herstal. It's a difficult name, so. Uh, so I'm going to show you how, uh, what I've learned through the years working with FME. Just to give you some small hints, uh, I just check if the sound is okay for uh, later. It's not, so. Yeah, we can skip. Skip that. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm the BLT of FME, so you know the sandwich, bacon, lettuce, tomato. <laughs> so that's where it comes from. I have five years of FME experience, both to uh, uh, working for clients and also internally at our company. Uh, we are a uh, software company that creates, uh, similar to ArcGIS, managing data for municipalities. And we use FME for all our data moving. And I'm uh, also eager to try new software, uh, open source specifically, and we use it a lot in combination with FME. So uh, we let uh, FME do a lot of the hard work, and then we just add on whatever we want to uh, get the work done and display the data. So have you ever felt your workspace are not perfect? So well, they will never be. Surprise, surprise, but I'll show you some hint that they might be a bit better and you can plan for the future. So how to teleport to a future workspace version? You have to think ahead, uh, so you or some of your colleagues have to avoid all the stupid thing you do, have done in the past. So that's my son trying to learn from my mistakes. So, uh, the basics, installation and software. Uh, this machine is very tiny, they often like, it's only a Raspberry Pi, they say at the office, because they have like big chunks like this one. But it uh, actually works uh, quite a lot. So the, the only thing you have to take into consideration is having a smaller data set to work on. And then at the end you move everything, the real processing to FME server or FME cloud at the end anyway. Uh, so SSD disk is a huge advantage uh, with respect to caching and reading, writing data. And uh, about 30 gigabyte uh, uh, RAM, that's uh, recommended. So I always have uh, too many beta versions uh, downloaded. I think I have eight installations on this uh, computer. Uh, So and that's, uh, I haven't experienced any issues having that many versions, just the issue is like which one to open for the correct client. So it works quite well. So I use the data inspector a lot. Uh, and the easiest thing to forget is the coordinate system. So you can easily go through all your workflows and then you deliver shitty data out with no coordinate system. Uh, so. Uh, Basically what I do is inspect all the data to make sure that they have a coordinate system. You can see it on the top right here. And if you have already ha added a background map, then you can see it's displayed correctly also. So that's the easiest check for your data. Uh, if you're working with uh, raster, uh, you should turn off the background map because it will try to reproject between the two different uh, coordinate system if they are different. It will take a lot of time. Uh, other tools I use is QGIS as for editing the data. Uh, I use the PG admin to administer the PostGIS database. And I use a tool called Process Explorer to just to see uh, uh, what is the computer doing. And the good thing here is that it's very easy to see how much CPU, how much RAM, and uh, the disk. Then you can easily spot the bottlenecks while you're pro processing. So I like to say that uh, you should just have a, a quick overview of your workspace and you should know before you run it where all the features are going. Uh, and this is a good uh, thing while you are waiting for a process to run, then you can walk through it and know which uh, lines are being uh, used first 
and which transformers are being hit first. With respect to debugging on uh, FME desktop, I usually use the sampler a lot. This is just to have a smaller subset of the data. And I like the random feature because it, then it gives me some strange errors every now and then, and then I've tested my workspace. Uh, and before and after at the bottom uh, left, you see I use inspectors on uh, the step before and after uh, one processing because then I know how the data should uh, be before and I know that I get the end result that I need. And after I've done with one uh, transformer, then I just delete all the inspectors because they clutter up a lot if you have a lot of them. I also use a lot the redirect to FME data inspector. Uh, and this uh, is because instead of having inspectors at the end, uh, I feel like this uh, approach is a bit more closer to getting how the uh, data is actually being written to that format or database. So this is the best one-to-one uh, -one that will be saved on the output file. I'm not sure if there's a big difference between the inspector and the redirect to inspector, but I've seen some differences. So how many here use FME server? Oh, that's quite a lot. Uh, so there it's uh, a bit different. You can't have any inspection and you have to read the uh, log files. So but I use the same approach there, uh, the sampler. And uh, on all the new rejected ports, I have a logger. So whenever something fails, then it will be written in the log file which features. So that's the easiest step before you want to do some proper error handling on your workspace. Just add a logger to all the rejected ports. And uh, the HTTP caller, how many have been using that before? So quite a lot. So the issue here, I've of often found that uh, you don't know uh, the URLs that you have uh, used to call, and that's difficult. So what I do is you use an attribute creator with all the parameters I need. Then I use a logger, uh, so all the URLs get uh, written in the log file. Then it's easy to uh, see like strange new letters doesn't get handled correctly in URLs and so on. Uh, and the HTTP caller seems to be more stable uh, when you give it uh, parameters that are predefined. At least it was in 2015 that was an issue. So if you want things to go fast, then you shouldn't read or write any data with FME. So one way, way to do that is uh, using uh, the database tool of PostGIS or anything, or using SQL executors or creators. Because then the database will do the work and you don't have to read all the features. Okay, so you want to read a little bit of data. That's also fine. Uh, previously, you used a reader uh, but uh, I really like this approach with uh, creator, attribute creator, and the feature reader. So I always use it now. Uh, the good thing here is that you can uh, send the feature reader a geometry and quite easily catch only that data without worrying about finding the bounding box or inputting manual coordinates or something. And I always prefix uh, all my parameters with underscore uh, because they d will then be at the top of the list in inspector and they're very easy to throw away at the end. Uh, and I know that I have created it and it's not from either data set. So let's try the sound again. So this is your workspace. It's a train station for those that knows the game. And these are all your features running around. So it's a bit like, like this. So you have to know where all the trains are at any given moment in time and then, yeah, deliver as much data as possible. So when you have read all your uh, data uh, within the workspace, then you have to get rid of them as fast as possible. Then you will reduce the uh, um, amount of memory needed 
And there's usually only some small uh, tricks that you have to do. Uh, instead of having all the features in memory and then starting to write, you can usually start quite early uh, to write the data. For instance, with a feature writer. So one example I did uh, was uh, one of my first tasks in 2013 was to geocode 300,000 uh, addresses in Norway and get some information. So I basically did a lot of uh, database uh, queries, uh, some cleaning, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you have to think, is uh, the workspace I created two years ago, uh, do we now have a service for it? Because then you can, you might not like it, but then you can just throw it away and use just the REST service, for instance. And these services are more optimized towards uh, that one specific functionality. And also, these, uh, in this case, uh, it's a geocoding service we have created. You can use it in other uh, services also. So I just briefed through all my workspaces. I think I have 3,000 workspaces. That's quite a lot. And the biggest one was 20 megabytes. Uh, so what I did here is just, when you're uh, migrating to a newer version, I usually just copy-paste all the transformers into a new empty sheet. And then, uh, in this case, it got reduced to two megabytes, uh, only doing that small thing. And then it feels like you get cleaned, uh, you clean something up. Uh, I usually attach the build number and the version on the file name. And I usually don't upgrade any transformers unless it's necessary, but the aggregator and feature merger, they have uh, better functionality in the newer versions, so those I tend to upgrade. I delete all the inspectors and logger, that's not needed. And I look into uh, the custom transformers doing the same uh, stuff. So uh, you are now uh, used to using the database connection. Previously, you had to hard code all the joiners, SQL uh, executors uh, with all the database parameters. So uh, do that work. Uh, start to use database connection. It really, uh, it really helps a lot uh, moving between staging and, uh, staging and uh, uh, live environments. And you can clean up, uh, as I mentioned in the previous talk, like with the attribute manager, you can replace a lot of the attribute creator and deleter and so on. So how many have a workspace that runs for more than 20 hours? Yeah. So uh, that's uh, basically no issue if you're going to do it for one client. Uh, so in 2013, we had one to three clients. We had to deliver it every three to six months. And it took two days to deliver to one client. Just start and take a walk in the sun, and then, yeah, two days later it was done. So in 2017, we had 15 clients. So that started to be a problem. Uh, they wanted data every day, the same dumps. And now it takes three hours for any number of clients in total. So, but you didn't have to do that transition until it was a bottleneck. So there's not, uh, not much change with respect to uh, hardware, a little bit more RAM. Um, uh, we use a lot of the database tools instead of reading everything into FME. Uh, we read all the data once uh, within FME, and then we just create all the 15 different schemas, and then we start to write that simultaneously to all the clients. So we read data once for everyone, instead of reading them 15 times. That saves a lot of time. And with the new parallel functionality, it's uh, very efficient to make it possible to uh, write in parallel, like a CSV files, you can write many of them simultaneously, and then you get rid of a lot of the data fast. So there are some tricks there, so. And the suppliers first, we had set to no. That means it's uh, 
filling up the, uh, the RAM. And now when we just changed a bit, that we were sure that all the suppliers were first, then it started to write uh, right away. So I just want to mention at the end there, like two, uh, the parallelization, there's more talks about that, but you can uh, think of them as two different kind of grouping of objects. So you have the regular tiling that's uh, common in, F uh, in uh, VMS uh, servers, etc. You tile the object based on geometry and then you do the same stuff on all these groups. Uh, that's one way to group them together. And you can also, if you have, let's say, a non-spatial format, then you can group by the geometry. And then you can group by, an, uh, by values instead. And uh, there is a modulo count transformer. So this basically uh, counts up to, for instance, eight. So first object will get, uh, starts at zero, I think. Uh, zero, the next one will get one, et cetera, et cetera, and then it will start again at item number nine to get uh, zero. So this can be used to group all the features. And if you have a few features, this is okay. Uh, you can do it a more efficient way by having all the zeros first, 10,000 zeros, and then you can start to write them instead of having to count all of them. So if you have a big uh, data set and use the modulo counter, you should uh, delete it and find a better way. Uh, and it's always a pain in the ass to uh, uh, make uh, improvements. So I think this uh, safe uh, best practice workspace, how many of you have heard about this, uh, this one? Yeah. So it's basically a workspace, which we all love, that uh, checks another workspace and gives comments uh, in a HTML report. Hey, you should improve this. Yeah, this is error, there's, yeah. Uh, so this is really handy, just like a quick check for, the, for your workspace. So I'll give you uh, 30 seconds with a nice little video and show you how you can contact me in one of any media, and then I'll sure you have some questions. Now arrived at Sigrun Pilili Yaman Lal Hashtas answering machine powered by FME server. I'm currently having a joint webinar with Don and Dale and we'll get back to you right after that. For sales questions, please send me an email. So that was an actual game. So it's FME in a game called Timbleweed Park. So any questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're speaking about uh, breakpoints, uh, etc. Uh, I'm not a programmer, so I'm not using the breakpoints because I think it's a hassle to skip through all the objects. Uh, but it's a good way to start to get to know your workspace because then you can see all the features are moving. But I never use it uh, uh, use it regularly because there's it's so much easier just to have a look at all the items before and after. Uh, uh, yeah, first of all, I hate attribute keepers, so they should be banned. 
Uh, <laughs> I make it on a wish list, ideas section. Yeah. Uh, because then it's very easy uh, to forget. You make a new attribute and it just doesn't move along. And you have to, if you have multiple of these, then you have to open all of them and say, okay, this new attribute I created, I want to add that also. So these are prohibited. Uh, the attribute manager. This one I usually tend to have right before I uh, write the data. Uh, so at the, uh, at the end of everything. And uh, yeah, I, li I like this approach a lot. Um, so I'm using it quite heavily now. Um, so use, use this one. Um, that's, that's a good uh, approach. Uh, yeah. Any more questions? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly how the orders of the features read are, uh, but the good thing about uh, feature writer, uh, so I was mentioning the client, uh, what we basically did there was to put the writer uh, inside a custom transformer, like this. And then connected everything and then you could run this in uh, as a group by. So you can group by all the tables and you can write all the tables simultaneously. And if you then write to uh, CSV, it's very fast. So uh, yeah. And yeah, you're mentioning the, the, um, the which features are read first, etc. That's I'm not sure if you can change that on the feature either, but I tend to use uh, two feature readers, like the one I wa want to read first in one, because then I know this one will run, and then the rest of the objects uh, with another feature reader, even though it's the same database. So, yeah. yeah. I'll just make a comment. If you attach a creator and then you attach that to another transformer, I think you can set the order of the connections, and that's probably the equivalent of in the navigator. Yeah, so if you do this and then this, yes. this line will be first. And you can actually, you can actually right click it. Oh. Ah, kind of oh, that's a new one. It's kind of a little hidden thing. And last ah. connection run time to Ah, I didn't know about that. Uh, well, then uh, I don't use FME, and um, then you're going straight to the database. Uh, like, for instance, the PostGIS. Uh, we have a lot of data in PostGIS stored. Uh, so a lot of the spatial stuff, like the simple overlays and clipping, we just create uh, SQL sentences in uh, FME, and then we basically ship the geometry to uh, the database, and then let it do all the work instead of reading everything. So if you have a lot of uh, uh, features, they should be at the same location in the same database, and you shouldn't read them in FME. So, yeah. It's difficult, but yeah. Is feature reader, reader and writer uh, useful in uh, desktop as well, or just in browser? Uh, you can use them both, so yeah.
they query geometry into a temporary table and then doing the join to the SQL in the database. Yep. Yep. There's, there's, it never ends, does it? No, it's like, uh, yeah, we, uh, I, we, we're, we think we work with large data in Norway. We're like four million people and like, but if you collect all the data in Norway, it's still not big data. So it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's uh, all the time we have for questions, but yeah. you're gonna be around the rest of the conference. Yeah, I'm the only one wearing shorts, so you can easily spot me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Sam. Yeah.